A ceremony in Stockholm where the announcement sounded ordinary, a few headlines, and then silence. But behind that silence was a shock. The 2025 Nobel Prize revealed that quantum behavior doesn't end at the atomic level. It crawls into our world, into devices we can touch, into circuits built by human hands. The microscopic just went macroscopic, and physics will never be the same. For more than a century, physics lived with a strange double life. On one side was the classical world, the realm of objects we can see and touch. Cars, planets, billiard balls, machines, everything in this world behaves predictably. If you know the forces, you know the future. On the other side was the quantum world, a realm ruled by chance, waves and uncertainty. Electrons that behave like smeared clouds, photons that interfere with themselves, particles that can be here, there or nowhere in particular, until you measure them. Both worlds worked, both were accurate, but they didn't overlap. Quantum effects were supposed to fade away as things got bigger. That belief wasn't rooted in theory, it was rooted in practicality. Quantum states are unbelievably delicate. One vibration, one stray photon, one degree of heat, and the quantum world collapses into classical behavior. For decades, physicists assumed this fragility was a law of nature. The 2025 Nobel Prize shattered that assumption, not by creating new theories, but by building new machines. The Nobel Prize recognized the achievement of taking quantum behavior, something typically confined to electrons and atoms, and scaling it up into devices millions of times larger. Superconducting circuits, macroscopic resonators, engineered quantum states inside chips you could hold in one hand. These weren't microscopic or theoretical. These were physical objects, visible under a basic microscope, made of billions of electrons moving as one coherent quantum wave. At the center of this revolution was a deceptively small invention, the Josephine Junction, two superconductors separated by a whisper-thin barrier. Classically, nothing should cross that barrier, but quantum mechanics has no problem ignoring the rules. Electrons in a superconductor move in pairs, Cooper pairs, and together they form a single quantum wave that stretches across the entire material, a wave big enough to tunnel straight through the barrier, unbroken. This tiny structure became the gateway to something enormous. Scientists realized they could engineer circuits that behaved like artificial atoms, circuits that absorbed and emitted energy in quantized amounts. Circuits that could be placed in superposition, occupying multiple energy states at once. Circuits that could be entangled, controlled, measured, repeated. These weren't electrons showing quantum behavior, they were circuits the size of sand grains. Before the experiments, quantum mechanics seemed like the private language of the microscope. Humans could observe it, but never enter it. The Nobel Prize winners proved something deeper. The divide between quantum and classical physics isn't real. There is no boundary, no size limit, no special threshold where quantum rules stop working. The only thing that ever hid quantum behavior was noise, heat, vibration, electrical interference. Once we learned to control that noise, the quantum world revealed itself everywhere. This doesn't just expand our understanding, it rewrites it. The classical world, the world of stable objects, and predictable motion isn't the default, it's the exception. Underneath it all, the universe is quantum, always was, always will be. The Nobel Prize recognized the moment we finally proved it at a scale large enough to erase all doubt. To understand the significance, we need to zoom in on how these artificial atoms actually work. In a normal circuit, electrons flow like a river of individual particles, but in a superconducting circuit, they merge into a single wave, a collective state with a well-defined phase. This phase behaves like the position of a particle in a potential well. When scientists send a carefully shaped microwave pulse into the device, something remarkable happens. The quantum wave inside doesn't slide smoothly upward like a classical system. 
it jumps into a higher energy state. When the energy is taken away, it drops back down just as abruptly. These jumps form the engineered energy levels of an artificial atom, a quantum object built not by nature, but by human design. Inside this tiny landscape, the quantum wave can rest quietly in its lowest state, or rise into a higher one. But the truly strange part is what it can do in between. Instead of choosing one state or the other, it can exist in both at the same time, a ghost-like blend of possibilities. This overlapping condition, called superposition, it's the secret ingredient behind quantum computing. And here's the twist that earned the Nobel Prize. This wasn't a mathematical trick or a computer model pretending to be quantum. It wasn't a microscopic particle hidden deep in an atom. It was a circuit, billions of electrons moving together, behaving like one unified quantum wave. As long as the system was cooled, isolated, and shielded from outside noise, the quantum state held firm. It didn't collapse. It didn't fade. It stayed coherent long enough for scientists to control it, poke it, and measure it. This was the moment the physics community realized something profound. Quantum rules don't vanish as things get bigger. They've been here all along, waiting for us to build machines quiet enough to hear them. Perhaps the most astonishing part of these experiments is coherence. Coherence describes how long a quantum state can survive before it collapses, how long a wave can remain whole. In the early experiments in the 2000s, coherence lasted nanoseconds. By the mid-2010s, microseconds. Today, in the systems that won the Nobel, coherence can last milliseconds, sometimes tens of milliseconds. In the world of superconducting circuits, that is an eternity. It means the wave of billions of electrons stays unified, one giant quantum object, long enough to perform complex manipulations, long enough to run algorithms, long enough to entangle, long enough to build the foundations of quantum computation. This is the first time in human history that quantum behavior could be held steady by design, not just observed by accident. That is why the Nobel Committee awarded the prize, not for a discovery in theory, but for a breakthrough in control, the transformation of quantum mechanics from a mystery into a full engineering discipline. So, what does this mean for the future? For one, it means we can finally use quantum systems the way nature uses them. Quantum computers are at the top of that list, not because they will replace normal computers, but because they can simulate things classical machines will never master molecular interactions, reaction pathways, exotic phases of matter, high-density materials, high-temperature superconductors, protein folding, quantum fields, and more. Quantum simulators, built from the same kind of circuits recognized by the noble, will become the microscopes of the future, tools that let us explore physical realities too complex for mathematics alone. Quantum networks will eventually allow secure communication guaranteed by the laws of physics, not by human encryption algorithms that can be broken. Quantum sensors will give us measurements of gravity, magnetism, and time far beyond the reach of classical instruments. At the surface level, this all sounds like technology, but underneath, it's something deeper. The Nobel Prize represents a shift in mindset. Quantum mechanics is no longer the hidden machinery of the universe. It is the machinery we can build with. The quantum world isn't confined to atoms anymore. It's a playground for human innovation. Once you accept that macroscopic objects, things made of millions of particles, can behave as a single quantum wave, the old assumptions about reality begin to crack. It forces us to ask uncomfortable questions. Is the world we see just the result of continuous collapse? Is classical physics simply a coarse, filtered version of a deeper quantum truth? What would the universe look like if decoherence didn't happen, or happened differently? The Nobel Prize doesn't answer these questions, but it does bring us closer. Because if we can build artificial atoms, engineer superposition, extend coherence, and control entanglement in objects we make with our own hands, then the boundary between theory and reality has already dissolved. We have entered the quantum universe, not by observing it, but by participating in it.
In awarding the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics, the Royal Swedish Academy didn't just celebrate three scientists, they recognized a shift in human capability. For the first time, we've built devices that show quantum weirdness at human scale, circuits behaving like atoms, waves stretching across macroscopic objects, tunneling and superposition controlled with precision rather than luck. The classical world now appears as the thin surface of something far stranger and far more fundamental. Everything beneath it is quantum, and thanks to the breakthroughs honored by the noble, we can finally reach into that hidden layer, shape it, guide it, and build with it. Quantum weirdness isn't small anymore, it's not confined to particles, it's not trapped in equations, it's here, and it's ours. We've stepped across the threshold. The universe didn't break its rules, it's revealed them, and now so can we. If you want to keep diving into the true quantum world, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.